Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward and in this tutorial we're going to go into part three of our advanced facial rig. As you can see, as I promised at the end of part two, I went ahead and and created a lot more custom bone shapes for our facial controllers here. Um, you can see them in action here, kind of binoculars there looking at little target shapes and then the cheeks kind of just puff out like so. And every, I tried to make the shapes all kind of look like you know whatever they were going to be controlling and that's I think you can see that that could be really helpful like well that's obviously the eyebrow controls this is obviously the inner eyebrows this is obviously the eyelids so on and so forth so it just helps you know if I was to pass this uh, rig and, and model off to a, another animator they'd pretty much pretty well know exactly you know how to work this guy how to work all these controls so um, just real quick, I'll show you the stash I have of, <laughs> of all the controllers. I just put them all in this layer and then just grabbed them all and hit Alt-G just to clear their location. So they're just kind of piled there together. So, um, But you have to keep them in your scene or, you know, they'll if you delete them, they'll also be deleted from your rig controls. So you got to just put them out of, out of the way out of sight, out of mind. So just put them on their own layer, way over there, hidden, and nobody will ever know. So anyways, we got our our rig all set up, but as you can see, it's not controlling the head, and the reason that is is because we're going to start working with a mesh deform modifier. So that being said, let's go ahead and start working on that. Let's go ahead and add a new uh, cube, and let's drag it over. And also, in the meantime, uh, as I was working on the advan uh, the uh, the rest of the bone shapes. I went ahead and threw the rig onto this bottom layer right here. So let's go ahead and turn that off for now so we don't have it in our way. Actually, you know what, let's turn it back on and grab all these controls we were playing with and just clear them out. Okay, now we'll turn that off. Grab our new box and let's go over here to our object tab. Come down here to where it says textured and let's go ahead and turn that to wire because we're going to need it to basically just be a cage around Edward's head here. So let's get that centered up. Let's go into the wireframe view. Center that up perfectly in there. There we go. And let's go to our side view. Go ahead and set that up. Now I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to tab into edit mode and hit W and subdivide. Let's do it three times. Uh, yeah, that's probably plenty and I'm gonna go ahead and delete half of it and use the old mirror modifier there we go turn on clipping um, now when you're creating your mesh to form mesh it basically has to be kind of a rough outline of your model it has to completely encompass the whole model because it's basically going to be hmm what's a good way to describe it um, well, I, I don't, <laughs> I can't think of a good way to describe it, how it works, but um, it controls everything that's inside of it. And I'm, by the way, I just turned on my proportional editing. Just hit, uh, um, actually, Alt M or M either way. Actually, O, it's actually O, not M. M merges, so O. O by itself, the O button just turns it on completely, enabled. And then if you hit Alt O, it sets to connected, but. Since I'm just working with this one mesh, it's the O button by itself works just fine. So as you can see, I'm kind of just dragging the outline of this new mesh to kind of just have a rough overlay of our model. It has to completely be outside of it. And the model that is con controlling has to be completely inside. So it's it's kind of like a cage. So let's just get this set up here. Now the mesh to form modifier, I hadn't really messed with it a lot until here recently. I, was, I decided finally just to break down and see what it was all about. There hasn't been a lot of documentation on it, so I had to do a lot of trial and error, but I think I figured out figured it out well enough to show you guys what I know. Oh, 
Okay, now the closer you get the the new mesh, the deform mesh, and speaking of, let me go and rename that to Edward Deform the form, not be from <laughs> form. There we go. Uh, the closer it is to the mesh, the more control it's going to have over it. Um, so, for example, like right here at the chin, it's a little bit closer than it is, say, at the bridge of the nose. So the chin control, the, the, the mesh will control the chin area a lot more than it will the bridge of the nose area, but um, it'll still control everything, but just not quite as much so. And if you're wondering exactly how this will work, well, just pay it and just keep watching. I'll show you. It's pretty cool, actually. You kind of get a nice cartoony effect. Like, uh, I, I know I reference Ice Age a lot, but <laughs> it was actually the first DVD I ever bought. But, uh, Scrat, the little squirrely guy, remember in the first Ice Age, he's, you know, at the opening of the movie, he's chasing his little acorn, and uh, the uh, big ice cliffs start moving, and he gets squished in between them, and it kind of squirts him out, and as it's doing that, like his eyeballs and everything get, you know, squished out, and it's totally unnatural. But, you know, it's funny because it's a cartoon. Well, this mesh deform modifier will help you, or will enable you to do a similar effect. It'll get, give you that rubbery, extremely exaggerated look that you can play with. Okay, so down there. Let's go ahead and grab the shoulders, move them out. Now, like I said, this is, well, I don't know if I said it before, but uh, this is going to be a fairly ad advanced rig. I don't want to sound like I'm a know-it-all or anything, because I certainly don't know it all. But uh, you don't have to do a mesh deform to, to have a good rig. This is just so you have a nice uh, extra options, like I said, for the um, cartoonish look, for extra stretchiness and rubberiness as a lot of the movies are getting into these days, especially I noticed a lot on uh, Megamind. The the characters really were extremely rubbery looking, which, in my opinion, is is maybe a little too much. But you know, it's a cartoon, so each one has its own style. But okay, so we got our basic outline. Let's go ahead and top view. Let's see, we have a few corners we need to smooth out. You gotta make sure we get everything inside, even the little ears poking out there. Sometimes, even no matter how careful you are, something sticks out. I was playing with this a little bit earlier, and everything was inside the mesh, but when I moved it a certain way, it came out side. So we hopefully that won't come up now. Okay, so that's basically a good outline covering everything. Now, there's a little trick that I want to do. <clears throat> like I said, everything or every point that's closer to the mesh that we're going to be controlling, in this case, Edward's head here, uh, the the points on the deform mesh, the, clo the closer they are to the, the inside mesh, the more it's going to control. And there's a little effect that I was trying to figure out how to do, uh, mixing a few different techniques and everything. Just couldn't get it to work. But... Uh, you know, when you when you move your eyes around, your eyelids kind of follow. Like if you look up, your eyelids will kind of go up just a little bit. And you look left and right, they'll just they'll kind of follow the movement of your eyeball. And I was trying to really wanting to get that effect in here, but the techniques I was trying to use was you're going to involve a rig and have you know a couple of bones here with uh, with very little uh, influence, so it would just barely move them. But trying to combine a rig and this mesh deform modifier is is not very fun. It doesn't work very well. You get double the motion. Like it's it's a modifier that basically moves the mesh deform modifier modifies the the underlying mesh, and the armature also does it. So it's kind of doubles the movement. So if you turn the head bone, 
it gets turned by the bone itself in the armature, and then the mesh to form also applies a turn, so it kind of doubles the rotation. So, anyways, if that makes sense, we have our mesh to form, and said all that to say this, I want to put another loop in here, so I can drag this one a little bit closer to the eyeball, so we can get a little bit more control when we go to move our eye bone around. Okay, so a little a few tweaks here and there. Uh, let's go ahead and put another loop right here. Maybe kind of thin this out just a little bit. Maybe one down in here, and why not one here? The more poly, the more polygons and and uh, vertices you have in your mesh to form, the more control you're going to have over individual controls, if, if that makes sense. Like, well, you can see it in action momentarily as soon as we get ready to start playing with it. We're just kind of getting it set up right now, obviously. Get that point there. There we go. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good cage to outline our, our head model here. If you're doing a whole body, you want to make sure you do the same thing around all the arms and legs and everything. Everything needs to be completely inside a control mesh like it is here. Okay, so um, before we go any further, let's go ahead and apply our mirror. Boom. And now we'll go ahead and turn on the the armature layer. And also I want to move, go ahead and move our, our uh, mesh to form uh, mesh here to the same layer that we have our lattice on, which is way over here. So we'll just go ahead and hit M and just go ahead and move it over there. And now I'm going to hold down Shift, select my head bone, or any bone is fine, as long as it's uh, one of the bones in the armature there. And we'll hit Control P. And we're going to set the parent with automatic weights will be fine. And now we'll go ahead and rotate our head bone. You can see the mesh to form moving along with it, and the eyeballs are kind of rolling around. Remember, that's because we set them to be parented uh, to the armature as an object rather than the, as an individual bone. So that's why the eyeballs aren't actually moving with the head bone. They're just following the, following the rotation of the eye bones, which are still pointing at our look at targets there. You kind of see those moving. So, um, okay, now let's go ahead and save. And now is where the, the magic and the processor intensive part of using the mesh to form modifier comes in. So what we wanna do is grab our mesh that we're gonna be using this on and go ahead and add a mesh to form modifier. Put that at the top of the stack, the subsurf needs, to go ahead and put that at the very bottom. And you wanna go ahead and click dynamic. And let's go ahead and bump that precision up to five or excuse me, from five up to six. And we'll go ahead and save because this is very processor intensive, so it might crash Blender if you try it. If it does, you can go ahead and set the precision down a little bit. Um, six is a little bit high, it goes from zero to 10, so five is the default as you could see. So we'll just bump it up one just to get a little bit more accuracy. And we'll go ahead and hit bind. Actually, first off, I need to tell it which object I'm going to deform to. So we'll scroll down here and say, Edward deform. Now we'll hit bind. There we go. And it'll take a few seconds. Um, the, the higher the precision is, the the longer it takes to bind. And it looks like Blender's going to lock up, but if you let it go, uh, it, it sometimes it works itself out. So we'll just let it sit here for a second and see what happens. Do 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 do. Taking a second. Or, or three. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll go ahead and pause the recorder so you don't have to sit here and wait with me, and then I'll unpause it as soon as it finishes, so stand by. Okay, well that took a little bit longer than I would have expected, but it finally finished. Um, Blender didn't actually lock up after all, so. Um, okay, so now if we grab our rig controllers, and since it's we already saw it in action, controlling our mesh deform. And now we have our mesh deform bound to our mesh. So when we move our rig, our mesh moves along with it. 
Now you can see when we move the jaw kind of wants to follow, kind of stretch down a little bit and you know that's not uh, desirable so we'll just clear out our rotation there and let's grab our deform mesh and go to our weight paint mode and you can see that it's it's got the influence of the head bone but not as much as it should so let's go ahead and set this to add and we'll come down here turn on our options make sure X mirror is checked and we'll go ahead and just start painting the way it should be the head should be all of the head should be controlled by the head bone if we rotate around make sure everything's all set up properly and we we'll grab our neck bone right there go ahead and grab our uh, subtract brush here just go ahead and subtract all of this out there we go and the shoulder bones eh, that's pretty good so that's up in there okay so that's that's pretty good coverage I think so there we go now um, yeah, everything's contained in there quite nicely. I was having, like I mentioned earlier, I had a little problem with the eyebrow, but um, maybe since I set the the bind influence up to six, perhaps that helped out. Now, I know what you're thinking. The eyeballs aren't, aren't moving. Well, uh, we need to go ahead and set the eyeballs to have, let's go into wireframe view. We need to set the eyeballs also to have the mesh deform modifier on them. We'll go ahead and bump that up. Actually, we'll see. Subsurf needs to go down to the bottom. And we'll go ahead and leave Lattice at the top. There we go. Set the object to be Edward Deform. And we'll go ahead and set the precision down to 4 this time. Check dynamic. Go ahead and click bind. And since the precision was down to 4 and the eyeballs are such a, a uh, lower resolution object, it didn't take nearly as long. So let's go ahead and grab the other eyeball and do the exact same thing. Mesh deform. Pop the subsurf down to the bottom. Set this to Edward deform. Oops. Edward deform. There we go. Set that to four. Dynamic bind. And it doesn't take nearly as long. Okay, so now we come out, we move our head around. Our eyeballs follow because they're also being controlled by our mesh deform here so I know what you're thinking what's you know what's the big deal why why can't we just use an armature well you can but if you use an armature you can't do things like this so we'll tab into edit mode and since our underlying mesh is bound to our mesh cage here we grab one of the points we're stretching the whole head how's that how cool is that so we can do all of these cartoon effects with our mesh deform here so let's go ahead and turn off the X mirror. So we're just doing what we want. And a couple of ways we can control this. Let's uh, go to our, our object data here. And we're going to go ahead and add a shape key. So let's say we want to you know, flatten him out. Say he got ran over by a steamroller or something. So uh, we got our basis. Let's go ahead and create a first key there. So we'll say flattened. Okay. And we tab into edit mode, grab everything, scale it on the y-axis, flatten them out like this, a little bit more maybe, boom. Okay, so it gets flattened. But even though he's flattened, our rig still controls everything. Just got to make sure he doesn't go through himself like that. Maybe, maybe we'll set the flattened down a little bit like so if you've ever seen the mask you could do an animation like look ma i'm roadkill you know like he does on there jim carrey so uh so you can you can control it with you know shape keys like this say you want to do another one like he got smacked in the head with a, a skillet or a pot or you know baseball bat or something or maybe an anvil lands on his head so we'll just say flattened Head. Okay, just go into edit mode and just grab, say, the top of it. Scale it on the Z-axis there. 
There we go. I just move it down. Boom. And then, bong, something smacked him on the head. And you can even, you know, spread it out a little bit if you want to. Like that. <laughs> so anyways, you can control it with shape keys. Or you can add a few more bones, control bones, to your rig. So I just grabbed the cheekbone there. Let's go ahead and tab into edit mode. And I'm just going to copy that up here. Let's go ahead and put a control bone right there on the eye. Remember, I wanted to get that subtle eye shape. And we'll call this, um, let's call it DEF for deform. And we'll name it I.L. Okay. And let's move it over until it's right there on the eye bone itself. And let's go ahead and parent it to that because we want it to control it. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Control P, keep the offset. And I guess I need to go ahead and create a duplicate because I need one over on the other side. So let's put my cursor right there in the center. And shift D, S, X, negative 1. Oops, and I did the period key first. So it rotates around the 3D cursor. S, X, negative 1. There we go. And since there's just the one, I'll just go ahead and manually rename it like that. And also make sure that it's parented to that eye bone. So since we copied the cheekbone, it therefore copied the uh, the uh, the custom bone shape. Now, I would like to kind of keep a difference between the the deform mod or the uh, the shape key drivers that we have on the on the base mesh here of the face. I'd like to keep a difference between those and the bones that are going to be controlling the deform modifier. So what I want to do is I'll go ahead and add a another object here. Can't come out of away from the rig there. Add one. There we go. Let's add an empty. Move that over here. And let's set it to be a sphere. And we'll set the size down to, you know what, let's just leave it at one. And so every bone that we're going to have that's going to control our, uh, our mesh to form is going to have just the sphere as a controller. So we'll go ahead and say, uh, go to our bone settings there. Instead of B cheek, we'll just say empty. There we go. And you can see that it uses this empty as its controller now. And we'll do the same thing over on this guy. D. There we go. Okay, and this kind of is getting very confusing in here. There's a lot of overlap there. So I'll tell you what, let's grab these two bones, tab into edit mode, and we'll go ahead and move them over to their own layer. So we'll just put them over there. And then tab out, go to our armature settings here, and let's just go to that layer. And so now we have a little bit less to clutter up our area. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and grab our mesh to form here and we'll go to weight paint and just right click on these bones and we'll just gently brush, let me go ahead and make sure we got add and strength is good, just gently brush some influence in there. We'll go ahead and do the same thing over here. Actually we could turn on X mirror and would have just had to do it the one time. But we'll gently brush some influence in here. Maybe a tiny bit in there. Okay. And we'll go to object mode. And now, if we grab our rig, go ahead and grab, turn on that control again, the uh, facial controls layer again. And we'll grab this. And actually, hmm. Well, no, it should be should be working. Oh, okay. <laughs> the reason it's not is because since we copied the cheekbones, they also kept the the constraint of the limit location left and right. So let's go ahead and delete that. Grab this guy. Go ahead and delete that. And now, okay, it's not wanting to. Well, it's still got it. There we go. Turn those guys off. And these guys, there we go. So we're not controlling the uh, the mesh deform at all. And once again, since we copied the cheekbone, it was set to not deform. So we'll go ahead and click deform there. 
and a form on this guy. And now when we move our eye controls, we can see that the mesh deform is deforming the mesh underneath and making the eyelids kind of follow the eye as we look around. I might be doing it a little too much because the bridge of the nose certainly does not follow your eyes as you move them. So let's jump into edit mode in here, or white paint mode. Grab those controls and let's go ahead and subtract some of that out. And make sure this one's good. Okay. So now, go ahead and grab our eyes controllers. And it's still controlling a little bit, but, you know, it's going to be a cartoonish character, so it's not a big deal. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and create a, a few more controllers. Let's put a couple up here, one on the eyebrow area, then maybe one on the chin and one on the cheeks. So let's go ahead and turn this layer of the facial controls off again. Grab our uh, eye controller there. And you can also do it manually like this. Um, and since we had to fix it up, since it was a, a duplicate of the cheekbone, uh, we changed it all on this one, so now when we duplicate this one, we won't have to worry about all the other stuff that we were having issues with. So we'll just go ahead and tab into edit mode now. Drag this guy down to the chin. Okay. And let's go ahead and name it to, name it, excuse me, name this uh, deform chin. And um, I need to set its parent to be the head, so we'll just say head. There we go. Over in the bone settings, just go down to parent and change it there. Um, I guess, let's see. Let me make sure the mirror editing is turned on. So that's still set to be the parent up there for some reason. I said head. There we go. Now then, okay. Uh, okay, so now let me grab this, and since I have that mirror editing turned on, Shift D. Okay. Ah, oh, I forgot to rename this. So deform I dot L. Actually, let's see. Deform I dot R. Dot L. Let me go ahead and delete that new one. Hmm. Mirror is not working. X-axis mirror. There it goes. Yeah. Okay. It was in the armature options. Okay. I guess, I guess I was using something different. Anyways, so we grab that. Shift D uh, <laughs> is not working for some reason. Okay, well, we'll do it manually. Okay, name this one D F underscore cheek. Okay. And go ahead and duplicate it up to the top. D E F brow. Okay, and that's probably good for the little controls here. So we'll grab those two, and I guess we'll shift D, scale them on the x-axis negative one time, since we're still rotating around the 3D cursor. And let's go ahead and flip their names. There we go. Hmm, for some reason, the mirror is not working. I'll name that defcheek.r. I didn't name that one dot L. There we go. And I didn't name that one dot L. So that's why the flip names didn't work. Okay. We're getting there. Okay, now we need to parent those to the head bone. So let's go ahead and go to our armature settings and turn that layer back on. Grab these two bones and the chin, I guess, needs to. Is it this one? I guess I need to rename that. And control P to the parent. There we go. Grab that guy. I thought I renamed this guy already. Deform chin. Okay, so we'll turn that face layer back off. Make sure everything's named accordingly. There we go. Okay. So now, let's go ahead and come out of edit mode. And you can see it kept the sphere of the empty uh, as the custom bone shape. 
Okay, so now we'll go into weight paint mode again and select the cheekbone. And this is going to have a lot more influence than the eye because this is going to control this whole area where the eye, I just wanted to control the eyelids. So I just gently painted the, the uh, influence around there. But the cheek is going to control this whole area here. Okay. Make sure this one kept and followed. Yes, the X mirror did its job there. So I'll grab the chin, paint this in here. Grab this whole area here. Okay, and the eyebrows, the same deal. Set my brush strength up. Maybe the radius a little bigger. Oops. Okay, go ahead and make these cover a lot of area. There we go. Okay, so now we come back to object mode, and we grab one of these controllers that we just made, and we move it. Boom. It controls that whole shebang there. So you can kind of stretch it as you need to. Put as many controls in here as you want. And also if you move this over here, say, and let's hit control comma. Go ahead and put the 3D cur or the rotate around the object rather than the 3D cursor there. So you can rotate these controls as well and kind of deform the face that way as well. So you can actually be chewing like really big instead of just the facial controls that we did. And even though we are deforming the whole face and the whole area, like so, let's go to our back to our face layers. These, even though they're not really positioned <laughs> very nicely anymore, they still control things the way that they're supposed to, as you can see. So, um, so anyways, that's pretty much it on how to set up your deform modifier. Make sure all these are turned off. Okay, um, and I guess that'll pretty much cover it on this tutorial series. So, I hope you learned a thing or two, and I hope you had fun, because if you didn't have fun uh, watching it, you'll have fun playing with your character, because you can set up all kinds of goofy shapes and make him look you know just like he's made out of rubber and you can do all kinds of things with this so um so thanks for watching and uh i'll catch you next time